this really happen? Can Rachel lose her company? Yeah, I can't find a, a legal way to head him off at the pass, definitely. Jake and Spencer are on Corey Publishing. Ooh. Spencer's a brilliant tactician. He set up that airtight, bogus company. And if he and Jake have enough votes at that shareholders meeting... Bye-bye, family business. What's the matter? You having another premonition? A baby. It's about the baby? Now everything's got to be watertight. Winthrop has no legal way around you and his son. He'd better not. I put too much into this. Oh, good you're here. You ask me here, Spencer. Look, Jake. Cass Winthrop will try every slick move he can to block our vote against Corey today. Winthrop will invent moves if he has to. All right, all right. Now we have to review the bids. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. I just lost the woman that I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with, and you want me to talk about stocks and bonds? Forget it. What do you say? You can find yourself another Patsy Spencer. Ah, what should I do today? Early. That's the note rather than a knock. It's um, a suggestion for us to have a chance. Is somebody out there? Lorna? I recognize that voice. Good. Well, we can all breakfast together. Yes, I'll send out for some scones. Felicia loves good Italian pastry. Don't even say my mother's name. A little sensitive, are we? Get out. And hospitable to boot. Mother no, can't stand the sight of you. I'm not going to ruin her day by explaining why you're here. Well, don't let me. I'll tell her why I want to see her daughter. Please go away, and I will come to you when I can. Soon. Can't wait too long. A year ago today, my father was lying in the hospital dying. Felicia is having a very difficult time of it. A stunningly devoted you turned out to be. And maybe a little sentimental. Go. Shona? What's that? It's that. Just a super, you know? There's a little plumbing backing up on the first floor. It's all right, I hope. Ah, uh, yeah. Good, so I hate plumbing problems. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful how it always seems better in the morning? Yeah. I'm not sure I could have gotten through the night without you. Sure, you could have. No. No, I really couldn't. I, I felt myself sinking. You know, thinking about this time last year. And... I know. God is good, though. He sent me an incredible, wonderful gift, you. That's me, angel from above. You are, you know. <laughs> yeah, how easy it would have been for me to take a drink last night, but I didn't because you helped me. No, you did that all on your own. Hey, you helped me. Now sit down and tell you something. Don't you know, here, put this on me. That we're all put on this earth to be with the people that can help us. 
The trick is to find them and treasure them. Even if a little angel did come down from above, it couldn't have helped if you hadn't decided to get sober for yourself. No, no, no. I had help, all right. The miracle is I took it. Hey, you know what? I, um, I don't want to be late. I may make a preamble to the AA meeting. Oh, well, that sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Better though, so I had to go back. But... You brought breakfast for me. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it, it's definitely for you. But you know, you really need to get out to the terrace to eat it before the food gets too cold and August gets too hot. I'm afraid we can't avoid August. Yeah, well, dig in. Well, my gracious. And just what did you think I was doing today? Cutting lumber? This is enough food for a lumberjack, Maggie. Oh, yeah, well, I, I, I know I went overboard, but you didn't your strength at all. Oh, yeah, the condemned man ate a hearty meal. Oh, no, 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 not, not that. Uh, you know what they say, uh, feed the fever, starve the cold, or... Well, you're just like a mother, aren't you? It's oh, creepy. Well, I'm afraid I'm not very hungry. Thank you anyway, though. I wish your grandfather were here. What is it about my grandfather? I mean, why is everybody always talking about him? Because he was a wonderful man. He was lots of fun, you know. He had so much vitality. He was very handsome. He was a terrific dancer. He was kind and wise and compassionate. And he had this tremendous ability to make you feel that you could accomplish even the impossible, and somehow you did. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. He also thought that you did the right thing. Not just because it was a good idea, but because it was expected. A very small price to pay for blessings given. How did he get that? From his parents and from his own beliefs. I mean, is it really possible for one person to get all that strength on their own? Who held his hand? I mean, who held your hand? Or who does when you're scared and don't know what to do exactly? Mac and Mom and what I learned about love from them. They taught me and made me feel as though I were embraced by love. I guess that's what I go to when I'm afraid. I try to remember that I'm embraced by love, that I'm part of it. And then I remember my wonderful family and I feel better. You know, I was just reading about that. In this, this is Mac's journal. This is what he says. What keeps us Corys together, what keeps the world together, are the bonds of love, family. The love we get from each other, the joy we have in each other's triumphs, the compassion we feel for each other's failures. The love. And in the knowing that in that love, we belong. The more I see of life, the more I believe that love of family is the last best protection against the destruction that's out there always waiting in life. And I feel so very blessed to have had a family like mine. Grip on yourself, man. I lost Paulina. You promised me that you would never find out that I was distant son. I did no such thing. You always knew there was that risk. Winning is not worth losing, Paulina. Are you going to keep crying about Paulina? This is a tough world, Jake. You have to be tough. For what, Spencer? Can you tell me that? You don't have any clue as to what's important here, do you? My life. 
My life is important. And how do you think you're gonna get it back? By wearing an expensive watch? Buying up stock with somebody else's money? No, Jake, you've gotta walk into that Cory boardroom today and grab Cory by the throat and devour it. Do what I tell you, Jake, and you'll get Paulina. And her love, and everything you've ever wanted by devouring Cory. If you want power, you have to have power. Jake, you can turn things around and win. But, do you have the guts to do it? It's incontrovertible. According to the experts, you're right on schedule. You should be experiencing morning sickness. This is great. Oh, gee, isn't it? That's a big relief to me. Well, I'm glad you're so relieved because I'm beginning to feel like a lab animal. You feel well, do you, baby? Th that's another thing. If you are going to keep track of my every move throughout the rest of this pregnancy, keep records of my every gas bubble and every dash to the john, then you might as well commit me right now because I will go quick. Th that's not going to help you. <laughs> Don't you want a husband who cares? Cares, yes. Obsesses, no. I promise to obsess less. Okay. Mm. Mm. It's a rat. Caring partner, would you care to get the door? I guess I'd better. Yeah. It's too early for people. What are you people doing here? We're uh, here. What are you doing here? What are we doing here? Can't come in time we feel like. Hi. Huh? Hi. We were a little worried Hi. about Ryan. We thought we'd stop by. Check yeah, we were kind of hoping maybe you guys have heard from him. Uh, yeah, he called to say that he thought Vicky was doing better. And I tried to reach him again last night, but he's on his way back to Bay City with Billy, which I guess is a good sign. That's a great sign, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Know, guys, we've been really worried about him. Yeah, so much. Yeah. yeah, so we thought we'd console ourselves with a couple little tasty treats here from the Daily Grind. We thought good. we'd like to share it with you guys. Huh? Delicious, huh? Yeah. No? Butter and sugar. A cake. It's good for you. Why? Oh, she doesn't need that. She do. Oh. You know what? We can come back and talk. No, 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 no. Infants and mothers. Infants and mothers? Is she pregnant? Hmm. I don't know. I guess I'm just a little confused. About what? About you spending the night here instead of with Tom. Oh, I thought you understood all that. I guess I didn't. I mean, I did, but then when it came down to it, I, uh... It's nice. I just needed to be alone. I wish I could understand why. Because I needed to be here. I needed to be able to concentrate on this. Uh -huh. Oh, I know you think I, I'm consumed by this takeover and that I'm still caught up with the memories of my father. He's dead. Yes, I know that, but he's still a very strong influence in my life. I wish you can't stop thinking about it. You know, criticizing my feelings for my father at a time like this is not a good idea. I'm sorry. I just, I just don't see this battle for Corey the same way you do. Oh, how do you see it, huh? Not life and death. You mean to say you don't see this as a crisis? It wasn't a crisis. I just said it's not a, a life and death crisis. You know me. How can you stand there and say that? Easy. So, how are you holding up? Hey, I've got my family. What else do I need? We're going to get through this, all of us together. We're going to yep. do just fine. Just fine. So, do the police know where Ian Ryan is? No, uh, they have a feeling he might come back here, so they have extra teams working in the neighborhood. That's all right. I've taken on extra security in case he decides to come back here. Good. Maggie, uh, go up. Wake up, uh, Paulina. I want to discuss how we're going to handle the press today, all right? Uh, Maggie, you don't need to go upstairs. Uh, Paulina's gone. What? I helped her leave last night. Go on. We have a stockholders meeting. No, this she signed her proxies over to Mom. Where did she go? I don't know, actually. She didn't say. She just said, you know, she didn't want what happened with Jake to be an embarrassment to the family, so she took off. She needs her family support right now. She would have done it. Of course she would have. 
Well, she probably feels that she needs some time alone. That's all right. I understand that. Too. Yeah. Stick good. around, Maggie. I want you to hear this too. Uh, we got a big day ahead of us. I got a word from KBAY that Vicki Harrison is officially out of the woods. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank heavens. Now, if they could just come up with a cure for Jake and Spencer, we'd be out of the woods too. I'll get that. I think there's something I have to take care of. Oh, okay. Go back. Look at this. Oh, they're beautiful, mm -hmm. honey. Aren't you sweet? Thank you very much. Oh, I wish I had, but I didn't. Oh, these are for you. Where are they from? No, probably Cass. Did I hear that unmistakable cry of hell? Oh, it's on, it's on. Uh, the flower's a mistake, that's all. Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> wow. Um, listen, if if, if, this, uh, if you're not feeling good, Frankie, we're out of here. We're, we're gone, gone, man. I, I think I mean the jinx... And, 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 you know. <laughs> I think the jinx up, don't you? We wanted to wait and see if everything was safe and sound before we told anybody, but the answer to your question is yes, we're expecting oh, you. Are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is excellent. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. You two and John are the only people who know, so say no more. Oh, say more. So is that the reason why you didn't tell us, or maybe because you were trying to save our feelings? Oh, oh no, not too. at all. Guys, I, you, you can't be serious. We're so happy for you. I mean, we'd never... Right, Jen? Of course. I mean, this is the best news in the world. <laughs> You know what? what? I think the world is ready for another winter. Oh! Yes! You should be Absolutely. Um, I, I would lie if I said that it wasn't devastating losing our baby, but... Well, it's a sadness that will be with us forever, but it's our sadness, not yours. And I think that it's great that this is happening. Yes. Very happy for you. You think so, too? Well, I think this is just perfect. I mean, it's the way it should be. You both really want this baby. So, if you want Paulina back, you've got to show her what kind of a man you are. The kind of a man I am is exactly why Paulina belted me in the first place. She didn't understand. You have to make her see what you were really trying to do. You were trying to save Corey Publishing. Paulina knows that's bull. It's only bull if you think it is. Excuse me, Spencer, but that's a crock. Part of winning is being creative, Jake. Show the Coreys they were wrong. All you wanted was to build up the company and lead it into the next century. How? I'll teach you everything you need to know. I'll take you down every path of leadership invented from Rome to corporate Japan. Then you will do it. You will do it. I don't Jake. know, Spencer. I don't know. No, you've got it in you, Jake. Just believe. I know what yesterday cost you. The humiliation. The loss of Paulina. The Corys have always hated my guts. Oh, I saw the pain they inflicted on you. It was a nightmare. Jake. Scrape the nail in the wound. What? Go over every detail of what they put you through and remember what it felt like. Every plunge of the knife, every sarcastic word, every sour look, every snub. Remember it all and feel it, Jake. Deep down deep and feel it in your eyes, in your skin, in your chest. And remember what it felt like to be savaged by those quarries. That's supposed to help? Fuel the fire, Jake. It will make you thirsty for their blood. Just remember how they've wronged you and act accordingly. You will have full authority to vote my block of Cory stock. Yes, but you must wait on my instructions. Marcus, I pay you a small fortune to be cool. I'll be advised. I will tell you to vote for or against Rachel Corey right up to the last minute. That's great. Now, no one knows that I own 10% share of Corey's stock, and I think we should keep it that way. Yes, it will serve us. Look, I've got to go. I've got a visitor. Follow my instructions, please, to the letter. Hello, Carl. Hello, love. 
Can I, uh, can I get you something? Coffee, tea, a drink? Nothing. So, you're still alive. <laughs> but you really didn't think I'd pass on, did you? Well, I had this nagging feeling you were hanging about somewhere. Huh. Well, I'm here to see you're overwhelmed with relief. I'm reasonably glad that you're alive. Reasonably? Well, that's warming to my heart. I just really wish that you'd stay the hell out of my life. I think I would like a cup of coffee. Would you get it for me, love? For old time's sake, as it were. You're healthy. Help yourself. Mm, this isn't like you, Lorna. I didn't come here to be your maid. I believe that, um, that these belong to you. No need, love. I've got plenty of copies. Take Take them. Can you see them, Carl? I can see them. I have excellent eyesight. Take a very good look at them. Because you have been blackmailing me with these for years, well, no more. I was right. You're not yourself at all. Oh, I am definitely myself and more. And you're going to listen to me. Not if you're going to be tedious. Can the biting wit. Lorna, you should know me well enough by now. I'm not a man who likes to be bullied. Neither do I. Well, it's been a most enjoyable visit. I look forward to seeing you again. I'm not moving until I said what I've come here to say. I know the speech, Lorna, just like I know these photographs. You know, darling, you were truly ravishing. I believe the word is ravished, isn't it? You know better than that, Lorna. You came to my bed willingly, a little anxiously, but oh so lovingly. And you were of legal age. Yes, you were very careful about that. And I was... Eager, as I remember it. I was going to seem young and vulnerable and very, very stupid. Now, of all the things you've ever been, you've never been stupid. Bright people can do stupid things, especially when they're needy. Well, you were certainly that when I first picked you up. Professor Higgins himself couldn't have had a better Eliza. Oh, yeah, you taught me plenty, Carl. That I don't deny. In fact, some of it I'm even grateful for, I still use. Oh, yeah. Yes, I dare say I answered many of your needs, and God knows you fulfilled some of mine. We, we did have a few wondrous times, didn't we? Whatever they were, they were over. And of course. I wasn't suggesting for a moment that we should resume our old relationship. I mean, you've, uh, you've grown up, moved on. And notice I don't say moved up. Just... But there is one thing I'm curious about. You have to tell me. I don't even think I'm going to talk to you about my love life. No, no I'm curious. When and where did you develop such an appetite for that well-scrubbed all-American boy type? I mean, first there was young Matthew, and then after that, that boy scout of a prosecutor, Anderson. That's over, too. Well, hope does bring you eternal. It was a most peculiar man. I happen to agree with you, not that it's any of your business. It will always be my business. I've appropriated... Uh, saying, well, it's, it's more of a philosophy, really, from my Chinese colleagues. Having saved a life, one is responsible for that life forever. I believe that. I do. And that's why you've been sending me these pictures? To express your concern for my well-being? Well, this, I, I will admit, is a slightly oblique way of doing it. I mean, I couldn't very well show up on your doorstep, back from the dead, yet again. It would seem a teeny bit redundant, wouldn't it? Now, I thought it was important, though, that we re-establish an association. Oh! What do you want from me, Carl? What do you think you're going to get with these pictures? I know what blackmail is. Oh, don't be silly. You taught me well, Carl. I've learned to recognize it through the years. I mean, every time I thought that I could rise above it, these things would resurface again. I see that these as a reminder to you of what we once meant to each other. You always fulfilled so much of my life, Lorna. No. She did. Well, you it's one and the same. No. You're wrong, Carl. You're dead wrong. 
And that's what I've come to tell you. My girlhood is dead. Never. It springs from within. The girl that you knew. She can't talk anymore. She can't talk for herself because she's long gone. She was young. And she was vulnerable. Sometimes I wait for her. And she thought that she was tough. And after a while, she thought that she knew everything because you had taught her everything. So sure, some of the lessons that you taught her, they stuck. And maybe that's why all those fresh scrub guys never last very long, Carl. But the fact is, she's not me. And you can't get what you want by waving her pictures at me. You came, didn't you? I came to return you. A dressy unknown. You can do with them what you want. You can burn those. You can put them in your private collection. You can paper a public men's restroom with them. I don't give a damn. If you want, you can even hand them off to the trade. Tabloids, so stupid little trades. Hell, it might even give my career a little boost. Shares? No. And you will lose your money? Oh, Hank, money is not the point. <laughs> Never is to the folks who have. Oh, don't, please don't let me All right, what is again. the point? That, that Jake McKinnon could become your boss? Who cares? I care. And every single Corey family member cares. It wouldn't kill you, would it? It'd be much worse than that, I can assure you. Oh, look. All right, look at it this way. When you go home at night, do you go home to the entire Corey family? Oh, you know I don't. Right, you come home to Tommy and me. I mean, assuming last night was an exception. It, it was an exception, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's an exception. Oh, all right. So no matter what happens in that meeting today, you're still coming home to Tom and me. You're still gonna be breathing. You're still gonna be alive. You're gonna have your health. Well, I'm gonna be alive. I can't speak for Jake McKinnon. Hmm. I'm sure Mac wouldn't want y'all hung up about this. I know he wouldn't. Oh, how do you know what Mac wants? Because he loves life. Well, let some jerk get him all twisted around worrying about something that was out of his control. Hank, you're talking as if we're already defeated. No, I just... I just don't want you losing it because somebody's trying to take over the family business. Cyrus, the moon and the stars are gonna shine. No matter who owns Corey Publishing. You know, I really thought that you would have appreciated what was at stake here. I really thought you, of all people, would have understood what family means to me. I do. Family is about love and about caring and about working until you drop to make sure everybody has what they need. What do you think I'm doing here, Hank? That's exactly what I'm doing. My father built us a, a heritage. He, he gave us a tradition to pass down to our children. Yeah, he sure did. Well, isn't that what you want for Tommy? I want Tom to have a long, healthy life. I want him to be able to make his own way, no matter what happens. Well, that's exactly what Mac wanted I, for us. I don't want to start a dynasty. Oh, don't make it sound like a dirty word, I'm please. Sorry. It's just that sometimes your family doesn't seem real to me, I guess, that's all. Why, because we've got our pride? Because we want to hang on to our heritage? No, because you have trust funds and stock options and seats on the board and boxes at the opera just by being a quarry. And none of you can imagine life without it. That's why you're here today. And that's why you weren't in my bed last night. I, I needed to be with him. Thanks. But no matter what happens, Tom and I are going to be in the backyard tonight. We're going to be watching to see if Saturn can be seen with the full moon. Hey, if you're there. Right. Amanda, what a pleasure. Jake, I'd like to speak to you before the meeting, if that's okay. It's fine. Now, excuse me, I have to call Canada to check on my family. I hear Vicky's doing better. I'm very happy. Thank you, Amanda. 
right, Jake, we have to deal with this. Now, I know you're not a destructive person, and whatever you and Spencer had done to Corey Publishing was all Spencer's I, idea. I was the one that bought it to Corey Stock, Amanda. You don't have the money to do that. I know that this was I Spencer's doing. I never intended doing. to hurt Corey. Come on, we've always been honest with each other, haven't we? Yes. You have a very big heart. And I think that basically you're a decent guy. What are you doing here, Amanda? I know the past few days must have been awful, and you probably feel that you've lost Paulina. Well, there's not much probably there. She still loves you, Jake. And I think you can win her back, but not if you insist on this Corey takeover bid. That would just seal the whole thing. You really believe that? I really do. But at least if you had convinced Paulina that you had no intention of destroying Corey Publishing. Well, why would I do that, Amanda, under any circumstances? I mean, I've sunk too much into it. Corey means a lot more than a financial investment to Mom and, and to the rest of the Coreys. But I guess you would never understand how much. Of course not. Because no class kids like me would never understand what kids like you would understand, right? You're always going to have a chip on your shoulder, aren't you? More than likely, Amanda. You know something? Because you're always going to be better, know more, or understand more than me. Isn't That's that right? That's not what this is about. No, what it is about is power. And believe me, I understand that. How can because you understand it? and you appreciate it when you don't have it. How can you say you understand it when you've already misused it? Who says? bunch of rich habitals when when a cold town boy decides that he wants to play in the same gold line sandbox that they have just like you amanda no i got you right you are put out and pauline is scared witless because i dared to be as big as mama cory i can't believe you're turning on me i'll tell you something else i'm going to use the power that i have and i am going to enjoy every minute of it i feel so sorry for you don't blow it. This day is gonna haunt you. Remember I said so. Bravo. They make me sick, Spencer. It feels awfully good to take the limo crowd down the pit, too, doesn't it? Transfusion. They think they can still run the world, but they just don't know. Dinosaur Spencer, the whole world's passed them by. You saw the movie they lost. We go get showered and change, Rachel. Corey thinks I'm a threat. She ain't seen nothing yet. That's right, you got that big meeting to go to, right? Yeah, wish us luck. Uh, good Most luck. and the best luck. I'm glad you guys dropped by, so because if we hadn't shared our news with somebody, I was going to pop. <laughs> pop. Pop! You're going to be a pop. That's perfect. I'm going to oh, call you pop. He's your relative, right? He's not my relative. Right? Pop. I'll see yeah, you later. Okay. I hey, love you. So long. Okay, all right? Okay. Okay, uh, would you two like some juice? I can show you some. You know what? I will go get the juice, because you're probably riding the high water still, aren't you? That's true. Yeah. Nothing. Everything's fine. Oh, come on. Be straight with me. You know, you always do that. You got your little feelers that I said nothing's wrong. Why don't you believe me? Nothing's wrong. Dean. <clears throat> I mean, it's us. Things aren't the same as they used to be. How? Yeah, it's like, I don't know. We, things just aren't the same. You know, we're, what we had seems like existing. It's gone. We, we, we try to be all lovey-dovey with each other, but it's just, it's different. What do you mean? We, just, we don't think the same anymore. We, we used to be so together on stuff, and it's just, it's just different now. It sounds to me like you're just growing a bit. You're changing. That's good. I mean, it just feels really weird. Cass and I are often as different as two people can be, but, you know, that's okay. In fact, it's great. Yeah, well, you have differences, right? But you have them on the surface, but deep down inside, you feel the same about stuff, right? Honey, you two have had such a rough time lately, you know? I think that you should just try to relax and, and forget all about your pain and your grief and live. 
Like Felicia says, one day at a time, you know? I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying. You know, you're, you're young. You should relax and enjoy yourselves while you have the chance, right? Right. Here you go. Hey, I think that sounds like pretty good advice, don't you, Dean? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Maybe losing our baby was a message for us. Really? What kind of message? Telling us that we're young and we should take our time and maybe explore life a little bit more. Check out our choices. Don't you think you can do that if you want to with a family? Sure. But you have limits. And maybe you don't always see all the choices. <clears throat> yeah, maybe you don't. Maybe you do. Speaking of choices, I think uh, being good friends at Mass, we should go over and wish him some luck. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, you want to catch up with you? Yeah, give him my Bye. best, okay? I hope you feel you better. You, you can try that. Enjoy too. Great. If you don't eat the cake, you eat the birds. Got it. Felicia, welcome back. How was the rehab? Fine, thank you. I'm glad. Well, what can I do for you, Felicia? I'm sorry, I don't have much time this morning. Well, actually, this isn't going to take much time. I was at the early bird AA meeting at the Presbyterian this morning. Oh, that's great, Felicia. You weren't there. No, I try to make those meetings when I can, but right now I have an incredibly complex business maneuver going on. Yes, oh, I've heard. I'll tell you what, I'll try to make a meeting tonight. You know, I'm not here to be your true officer for AA, so you can stop worrying. I'm here because of that extremely complex business maneuver, Spencer. I want you to know I think it stinks. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way, Felicia. You know, one of the things I learned from Victor is that resentments are like toxins. When they build up, they're lethal. And that's why you're here, to tell me about your resentments? Yes, yes, I'm feeling an enormous resentment right now, and all of it is towards Felicia. you. Felicia, well, what have I done to you? It's not to me. It's to Rachel and to the quarries. What you and Jake are doing is really unforgivable, Spencer. Business is business. You shouldn't let it get to you. Right. You just rip out my friend's heart, and I'm supposed to just stand by and do nothing. Now, is that what Jake and I have done is perfectly legal. But it's not ethical or honest. And you know what? That's really what's bugging me. Because one of the first things we learn as a drunk is to be 100% honest with ourselves, and you know that. I don't see a point, Felicia. If you can do what you're doing to Rachel, then you haven't learned anything, Spencer. If you can't be 100% honest with yourself, you then don't know who you are. I know precisely who I am. No. No, I don't think you do. Don't you see that, that it could mean that you could take a drink? And that could mean that you could become a drunk and even die? And I just can't let that happen to you. No one has asked you to stand guard over me, Felicia. We all stand guard over each other. You know that. Well, why don't you let me handle my recovery program? And you don't have yours. a recovery program. Stay out of my business, will you? And let you die. I can't do that. You're playing with poison, Spencer. Please, call your sponsor. Call Victor. Call me. Leave Rachel alone. If you don't. You're the one who's going to be hurt, and that would be the worst thing of all. Think about it. I'm going to go to a meeting early in case there's some last minute handshaking to be done. Oh, good. That'll be a big help. Thanks. See Thank you. you. Good, Iris. You're here. Of course. Okay. Let's circle the wagons. Where's Hank? I thought he was going to be here, too. You know, he seems to have a, a problem with this sort of thing. Sorry. Oh, Maggie. Very nice. Don't be shocked. It's Amanda's. It's my bodyguard uniform. Excuse me? Oh, yeah. I've got a great right hook. I'm going to punch out any pesky reporters or Jake if he shows up. I don't think Jake would be that stupid. Nobody is stubborn. Oh. After what the Corey did to Jake yesterday, I think he's going to head underground for some time, deeply underground. I wish I could believe he was going to hide underground. So what's the latest news? The cast says it's too close to call. There must be a majority somewhere. Well, the numbers are even between us and Distant Sun, but uh, there's 10% unaccounted for floating around out there. Oh, that 10% either way is going to give me a nervous break. We'll be all right. Yeah. Why don't we go win this thing, OK? OK. Grandma would have liked this fight. Yes. Let's go win this for Grandma and Mac, OK? Ready.
I can before it goes to a boat. Yeah. Hey, honey. You're not advised. How are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, good. How is Rehan? Okay. Good. Lovely lady. Oh, oh, good for you. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Hello, Rachel. Okay, meeting starts in 20 minutes. We can watch from here. Are you there, Rachel? I'm, uh, I'm having trouble hearing you. And perhaps it's an emotional block. You're pushing. I don't like this. Now, I just wanted to remind you of my offer. I haven't forgotten. Oh, just in case. I'll vote my 10% of the stock with you. You consent to be seen with me in public. I have no intention of helping you. Sorry, Rachel, I didn't hear your answer. Are you ready to save yourself and your family? I'm here, folks. The next chairman of the board. Channel 4 News now brings you first news on the scene at 5. First news, first forecast with Bill Hall. It's on the scene at 5, weekdays, here on Channel 4. Hey, Mid-South, you said you wanted more news and weather, plus entertainment and fun on the morning show. Well, you got it. Watch the new Channel 4 morning show. Weekday mornings, here on Channel 4.